Bismillah. Thank you, uh, Brother Shabir. Uh, back to the ancient mythologies, the Greek. Uh, you said that the Atlas was a god. While there's some debate on this case, I heard that Atlas was actually a titan, the grandchild of Oranos and uh, nephew and Luton to Kronos in the, in the war against the gods. Uh, what do you think on this? I regret that I haven't studied it to the extent that you have, uh, and I do appreciate your knowledge on, in this field. I, I wish you were up here to share the platform with me and to explain some of these things. So, uh, I, I, in mentioning Atlas, my point was only that uh, when, when people wanted to uh, explain how things happened, they, they, uh, they explained things which we now know to be, uh, to have a, a sort of uh, unseen a physical reality, but a reality that can be studied n nonetheless. They attributed these things to human beings and figures that look like ourselves. So they wanted somebody to hold up the sky. So Atlas is the one in that mythology that holds up the sky. Nowadays we don't need somebody to hold up the sky because we don't think of the sky in this way. And it is interesting then in, so, so whether he was a god or, or, or titan as you say, uh, to me, that's not the important point. The important point is that uh, it, in, in these mythologies, people uh, came up with figures like human beings, either a, a giant-sized one or sometimes a miniature one, uh, to deal with certain issues, to explain certain physical phenomena. And nowadays, we do not need these explanations. We have other scientific explanations. It is interesting along these lines to recognize that in, in, in the Quran, uh, things are explained as uh, going back to the one God. Remember how I said that uh, the uh, Romans had gods for almost e everything, the door and the threshold of the door and the hinge that holds up the door and so on. So there was an idea that something uh, spiritual must be there doing all of these things. And the Quran is saying that it's God who does everything. The one unseen creator of the heavens and the earth does everything. So you don't need to attribute things uh, to other beings and imagine that there is a physical a god like, you know, looking like a human being or sometimes a, a human being with uh, whether an elephant head or some other head uh, that, that does things. Uh, the, uh, we find many representations. Uh, Hanuman in, in the Hindu pantheon is a monkey god. And uh, we find in the, the Egyptian mythology that uh, often they represented God as a human body with uh, the head of a ram, or sometimes the head of a falcon, and so on. Or in one case, the head of a cat. So uh, the, the, the idea in, in the Islamic theology as coming out of the Quran is that the unseen creator of the heavens and the earth does everything. You don't worship the sun and the moon as the ancient Egyptians did. Why? Uh, because God is the one who created the sun and the moon, and God has subjected them to us. That's very interesting. It, it, you see, the ancient Egyptians were... Uh, praying to God in, in the morning, praying to the sun God in the morning because they see the sun coming up now and they're praying for the longevity of the sun and for assurance that the sun will rise up every day. But Muslims are taught, don't pray to the sun, pray to God and ask God to keep the system going because He is the one who keeps the whole system going. Everything is subjected to regulations and to even to calculations. The Quran says, Ashamsu wal Kamaru bi husban. The sun and the moon are according to measurements. Now, of course, that can prompt people to try and find out what are the measurements. And now we know very precise measurements that the sun, uh, 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 the sun is revolving around its own axis. The sun is part of the Milky Way galaxy, which is self-revolving. The Earth is revolving around the sun in 365 and a quarter days approximately. The Earth is revolving around its own axis in approximately 24 hours. So everything according to precise measurements. And who is the grand mathematicians that put all of these measurements in, in place? It is the unseen creator of the heavens and, and the earth. In this uh, regard, it is uh, interesting to mention as well that uh, the, it, it, when, when it, in, this, in the biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it is mentioned that his son Ibrahim died, and at the same time there was an eclipse, and uh, people said there is an eclipse because the son of our Prophet died. And, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, heard them saying this, and he corrected them on the spot. He said that the sun and the moon are the signs of God. They do not eclipse for the birth or death of any man. So in this way, Islam 
uh, sought to eradicate superstition from people and to bring people into the adoration and admiration and worship of the one unseen creator of the uh, heavens and the earth, not to any of the physical things that we can see or touch. I